So I guess we should get started on that. So recently you guys announced you were, you had split from the main, uh, you'd forked the project away from the Asobo A320neo. For those of you who aren't quite aware, well, for those who aren't quite aware, would you like to explain what that is from a technical perspective? Sure, yeah. So when we started out, um, all of our modifications and additions to the plane were done on top of the um, default A320neo, the one that comes with the simulator. But especially with updates, that proves to break a lot of things on every update because Sobo also updates the AZ20neo and a lot of the airliner code. Um, that's gotten better with recent updates as things have kind of slowed a bit, but it's still an issue. And uh, second of all, um, we're in talks with Microsoft to put the to put the or I'd rather make the plane available through the in-game marketplace, stable versions, so that it's more accessible for people to to get. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to make sure it doesn't conflict with the default A320 new at all. So this kind of fork, or rather um, distributing the fly-by-wire A320 Neo as a separate package was planned for a while, um, but we just finally got it done within the past few days. Um, and it went really smoothly. The only thing people do have to keep in mind is in the development and experimental versions of the mod that the all the liveries that have worked previously won't work anymore because they reference the old package. So they'll work on the default plane, but not this one. And what a lot of our developers on install are working on, including this day, have been a livery converter. Basically, you cl click one button and it'll convert all the liveries to work with the uh, the new package. So that's definitely coming like within the end of the week. Perfect. So with the project moving, hopefully, to the Microsoft Store, um, I know this might be a bit too early to ask, but do you think with the upcoming Xbox release of Microsoft Flight Simulator that it would be possible to have the mod available on there, or is it too early to say? I believe so. Um, that's that's part of the reason why it's going to be in the marketplace, because sure. um, the Xbox is kind of a closed ecosystem. It's kind of very sandboxed. So we the only way to kind of distribute... Um, aircraft is going to be through the marketplace or with the base sim itself, but we're going with the marketplace. And we do see it being available uh, on Xbox. Um, there might be a good amount of challenges involved in that, how how input is taken, especially with things like the EFB, for example. Um, you need to input like text sometimes. So there's yeah. going to be a fair share of challenges to get it working smoothly there, especially since this is kind of new for a, a flight sim in general to, to be put on like a console. But um, yeah, hopefully things work out. We're looking forward to it. Excellent. Um, so with separating from the default A320, does this mean that there is going to be a new standalone model uh, that you could develop for the for the mod itself? So it's it's improved from the Asobo version, asks uh, Evan. Okay. Um, by model, I'm assuming 3D model. So so that's a challenge we've we've kind of been working on for a while. Um, Basically, the specification, there's there's a model specification called GLTF that Asobo uses, and it's not the default one that's used widely elsewhere. They added their own extensions on top of it to get it to work with the sim. And we have one of our developers working on a combination of importer and exporter for Blender so that we can import the model, the Sobo model, make the changes we need to, and export it back to the sim. Um, that's been in development for a while. It's It's kind of time consuming. But once that's done, we'll be free to make a lot of model changes and um, get like the uh, cockpit and exterior model to where we want it to be. Uh, in the meantime, though, we've we've worked with the uh, the actual raw um, data in the model file itself with a couple scripts that allow us to add new models to the sim. So that's how we were able to add the EFB and a couple other things inside the plane. Perfect. I must.